So welcome to today's class. Today we'll be uh, talking about the chi-square test. Uh, my name is uh, John Walamuma. I'm from the School of Veterinary Medicine at Unza, the Department of Disease Control. Uh, by way of uh, introduction, uh, we already learned that um, uh, statistics um, is a set of tools that is used uh, to analyze data so that uh, we can use uh, uh, information from, uh, obtained from such analysis to make decision. And chi-square test in one of, is one of such statistical tools that is used to uh, make a, um, uh, to analyze data for uh, the purpose of uh, you know making decision. We talked about uh, uh, statistics being uh, broadly classified into two major uh, categories. We talked about uh, uh, descriptive statistics and also uh, inferential statistics. So the chi-square test will fall under the category of inferential statistics where we want to find out uh, uh, why certain things are, are happening the, the way they are or to find out the relationship between one variable with the other. So basically, a chi-square test, as I said, is, a, is, a, is one of those statistical tools that we use to analyze data so that we can uh, uh, use such uh, information uh, to make decision. Okay? So uh, the lesson objectives for today are we want you, at the end of this um, uh, lecture, to be able to construct a two by two uh, table. Uh, I'll show you as we proceed how we go about uh, constructing a two by two uh, table. And then uh, also be able to test. You should be able to test whether two categorical variables. Uh, in the earlier lecture, we, de we defined uh, what a variable is. So we want to know whether two categorical variables uh, are associated uh, with each other, so we're using the chi-square test. And then see how we can apply the chi-square test in testing hypothesis for, in case of a two by two uh, table. So in this case, we are talking about uh, uh, two variables. We want to test whether there's an association between two, two variables. So basically, this is, these are the objectives uh, for this particular lecture. So a chi-square test uh, is used to conduct hypothesis testing in inferential statistics. I mentioned that uh, we br broadly classify a statistic into descriptive, uh, where we do uh, the measures of central tendons, uh, such as the mean, the median, and the mode. Uh, and also, we also under uh, descriptive statistics, we, we do uh, things like uh, um, describing the variability or the variance in the data where we do the range, the mode, and the uh, 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 and variance. Oh, sorry, uh, variability, we talk about the variance, the range, and standard deviation. So that's uh, about the, 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 the variance. But now we're talking about inferential statistics uh, where we want to um, make conclusions and, the, or, uh, and find out why, explain why things are certain way. So chi-square is one such tool that is made used in inferential statistics. So under the chi-square, when you're trying to do chi-square, normally we group data into what we call contingence tables. So uh, I'll show you how a contingence table look like. Basically, it's a cross-tabulation of the two variables. In this case, we are using two variables uh, uh, as an example. Of course, we can have more than two variables, but we want to take a simple case that involves uh, two random variables. So you, 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 you plot these two uh, against uh, a one, one takes the quorum and the other takes the rows. Uh, it comes, then, you, then you, you, do, you, 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 you plot the values, the observation in that table. So you see how it goes as we go. So uh, when you want to test an association, as the chi-square uh, test is used uh, for testing association between uh, two categorical uh, variables, uh, you remember in the in the in the in the earlier lecture we talked about the different type of variables. We broadly classify them as uh, uh, quantitative variables and the qualitative uh, variables. So under qualitative we have the nominal, 
we also have the, the original and we have the interval. Now, in this, in this case, we're talking about two qualitative variable, uh, variables, and you want to see whether there's an association between uh, variable A and variable B. Uh, uh, so this, then you use the chi-square test. Let's begin a situation where, we, for instance, uh, we begin with the population. This is a study population. This could be a, a population of dogs, a population of human beings, or whatever elements you want to study. But in this case, we want to focus with people. Then we have people uh, who have the disease of interest, uh, let's say uh, COVID. And then you have people without the disease uh, of interest, which is in this COVID. So uh, the people who have got the, the disease of interest, we, we, of course, we say the outcome is disease. Uh, so that's the outcome. So these people with the disease, they have got the outcome of interest. Then you have the people without the disease, they don't have the outcome of interest. And then among those who have COVID, uh, you know, some may have been exposed to risk factors. Others may not have been. So now, so you have a risk factor that you are trying to uh, study. We want to see whether, uh, for instance, um, we want to want to see whether uh, having COVID, COVID is related to a particular uh, risk factor. Okay, let's see. Let me give an example. For instance, you want to see uh, whether uh, having COVID is related for you using public transport. So using public transport may be a risk factor. So you want to see whether there's an association between a person having COVID and also using a public transport. Uh, so the outcome is COVID. And then the risk factor is um, uh, using public transport. Because you realize that a, a risk factor is a factor that increases the likelihood of you uh, getting uh, the disease of interest. So the risk factor or does it increases the likelihood of being exposed. So among those that you find that among those people that could have COVID, some use public transport, the uh, risk factor positive, some may not use uh, public transport, that's risk factor negative. Then we go to the people without COVID, uh, that's the other category, and then we find that the people without COVID, uh, some may use uh, public transport, some may not use public, uh, public transport. So this is the scenario that we have. So we have the outcome, that's a variable, that's a, the dependent variable where we have the outcome, and the independent variable, which is the, the risk factor. Now we want to see whether there is an association between a person getting COVID and also using transport, uh, public transport. So we want to test the association between these two, and then we, uh, you can now uh, go ahead and investigate. But now let me give uh, something that is close to, to the students. Uh, I want to give a practical example, for instance, for the students uh, who are in, in body, body. So we want to look at uh, students uh, living in one residential area compared to living in the other residential area with respect to uh, having uh, diarrhea. So this is a scenario we have. Uh, uh, the scenario that we have is that we want to test, is there an association, is there an association between staying in one particular hall of residence and getting diarrhea? Yeah, that's what we want to investigate. So the example here is that the result of the study investigating incidence of diarrhea among students. The data consists of a random sample of 120 students. Out of this, out of the 120, 34 are residents of the ruins and 66 are from the halls, other halls of residence. So we're saying that uh, we have 120 students that we have sampled, and out of these, 54 are coming from the ruins, and then 66 are coming from other halls of residence. residence. Then again, out of these 34 or 54 that are coming from the ruins, we discover that uh, uh, 37 develop uh, uh, diarrhea during the study period, while 13 from, uh, from the 66 students from the other halls of residences develop uh, diarrhea. So we have a scenario here. We say that we get, uh, we sample 120 students, we sample them random, randomly, and then find out uh, how, whether they experience diarrhea or not. And we're saying that 54 are coming from the ruins. And out of these 54, uh, after investigation, we find that 37 actually developed a diarrhea. Then we have 66 that are coming from the 
new residents or other residences. And out of this, 13 develop diarrhea. Now, over the one month period that we're investigating. So the question is, is there an association between staying in a particular hall of residence and also getting diarrhea? That's the question we want to answer. So in order to find out a, uh, a solution to the problem of diarrhea among students, we wish to know whether there is an association between staying in the ruins, staying in the ruins, and also suffering from diarrhea. Because somebody may say, I think staying in the ruins is not good. Because if you stay in the ruins, you're going to be suffering from diarrhea. So now we want to test. So somebody may put up that, uh, 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 that uh, hypothesis that there is, uh, if you stay in the ruin, you're going to be suffering from diarrhea. Now we want to test that uh, hypothesis. Is there an association between staying in the ruins and suffering from diarrhea? So in this case, staying in the ruins is an independent variable, and suffering from diarrhea is a dependent variable. So what we do now is we construct uh, a, a, a contiguous table. In this case, it's a two by two contiguous table. So what we do, in the, in, in the rows, we put uh, the exposure. So exposure variable in this case is what is staying in the ruins, or the whole of residence where you stay. But we are interested in staying in the ruins. So the question we are asking, among the 120, 122 stu two, uh, uh, 120 students, we are saying, uh, does this student stay in the ruins, or, does they not, do, they, or do they stay in other residential areas? So the exposure, uh, if you look at the the extreme uh, left, we have the exposure, which is the residence. In this case, we are interested, the question is, are you staying in the ruins? Yes. Are you staying in the ruins or no? So in this case, yes. Uh, how many are staying in the ruins? If you look at the extreme end uh, on the right side, is you follow that uh, row where this is, is 54. So 54 are staying in the ruins. Then you, you find the no, uh, that row you find at the extreme end of the right, is 66. So 66 do not stay in the ruins. In other words, 66 are staying in the other halls of residence. And so the total number, if you look at the bottom right uh, of the table, that is 122. So these are the number of students that are in the study. Now, and, uh, on the column part where we put disease, in this case, uh, uh, the, this is the outcome of interest, that is diarrhea. The outcome of interest, you remember also I said this is the dependent variable. So disease or diarrhea is a dependent variable and wall of residence is an independent variable. So we look at the disease. Now we ask the question, out of the 54 uh, who stay in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ruins, how many actually developed the disease? Out of the 54, how many developed the disease? We find that 37 developed the disease. That is uh, and, uh, in this case. Then we also say, out of the 54, uh, how many did not develop the disease? In this case, it comes to 17. So 17, uh, of those, among those who stay in the old races, did not develop the, the disease. Well, as 37 developed the disease, the total gives us uh, uh, 54. And then among the 66 that are staying in other halls of residence, we find that 13 developed the disease and 53 did not develop the disease. And then it gives us the 20 of the total disease in the study, 50 were diseased and um, 70 uh, were not diseased. Remember that we are saying that even among those who did not stay in the ruins, some developed the disease. And also remember that some among those who stay in the ruins, some did not develop the disease of interest. So the scenario we have here is, uh, these are the observed values. So this is what we observed. So I want you to keep in mind that this table is talking about observed values. This is what we, 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 we have observed. Because I'll go to another scenario where we're going to look at the expected, uh, considering the now hypothesis. So take in mind that this is what was observed when the study was done. So the same table, I keep it in, in, uh, uh, up there. Uh, observed values. So observed values in the continuous table are depicted above. Uh, if you look at in the study, uh, we can say uh, 54, 57 out of 50, 
57 out, out of 54 developed the disease in the ruins, and also 13 out of 66 uh, developed disease in other also regions. So if you want, you can say the prevalence of disease among those who stayed in the ruins is 30, uh, 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 68.5. Whereas the prevalence of disease among those who, who stayed in other also of residences is 20. So we are saying, of course, when you look at it apparently like this, there's a, an apparent difference. But we want to find out whether this difference is really a statistical and not just by chance. Because sometimes you may find a situation like this and you find that maybe the difference in the two values is simply because of chance variation or just because of you know, the way you sampled the, the student. But we want to see, is there a real statistical difference between 20% and 68.5? So that's why we want to use the chi-square test. So do these data suggest an association between ex disease and, and exposure? Is there a real association or is just you know, something that you get by chance? So to do this, we start with the, uh, uh, stating the null hypothesis. So before you do a chi-square test, you have to state a null hypothesis. And this is the null hypothesis which you are going to test. So the null hypothesis is that there is no association between the outcome between the exposure and the outcome. So we're saying there is no association. So there is no association between having diarrhea and also the type of residence where you stay. The alternative is that there is an association between exposure and the outcome. So this is important that we state in our hypothesis and also we state the level of significance at which we want to test this hypothesis. Do we want to test this hypothesis at 95% level of confidence or 99 or 80%? Whichever is, is suitable for you, you, you set uh, the appropriate level of confidence. So we state in our hypothesis and state the level of, uh, uh, level of significance, level of confidence you want to test this hypothesis. Okay, so uh, paraphrasing this, uh, we can say also that the proportion of students suffering diarrhea among those living in the ruins is the same as those living in the whole of residence. So you know, the, this is a null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is now means zero. So we are saying that there is no difference. So null hypothesis means in zero difference. That's why I'm saying that the proportion of students suffering from diarrhea among those living in the ruin is the same as those living in other walls of residence. So we are saying it's, it's the same. So if it is proportion, I would say proportion one is equal to proportion two. They are the same. That's a, uh, the null hypothesis. Of course, we'll see whether this uh, null hypothesis is valid or, you know, or, or it's true or not true. The alternative uh, 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 hypothesis is that the proportion of students suffering diarrhea among those living in the ruins is not the same as those living in other halls of residence. So we are saying that uh, the alternative is suggesting otherwise, that uh, the, the proportion is not the same, it's different. So now we want to test the null hypothesis, the one which is saying same proportion, same prevalence, and then we use uh, uh, 95% confidence level, and then gives us the alpha value, of course, of five, as you may know. So remember, I already said that uh, we, we, we have the observed values. Remember the, con the contingence table that I showed you earlier on, uh, which uh, tabulates, cross-tabulates the uh, exposure variable and also the, the, the outcome variable. And, and then we, 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 we made that contingence table. And now, those were the observed value. Now, to test the null hypothesis, we have to create another table. This table will contain values what we would expect if the null hypothesis is true. So if the null hypothesis is true, then we expect a certain scenario. So this is the scenario now which we are going to show. So what would we expect if the null hypothesis was true? So we do calculations. Uh, to expect to, to, to come up with uh, the, the expected value. So I uh, don't mind so much about, uh, about this. this. Uh, I'll show you how we, we do calculate uh, 
of course what you do to calculate the expected value you have the row at uh, total divided by the total column and then you you divide by the sample size but i'll show you in a practical example uh, based on the the case that we are handling so what we do when we are calculating the expected values remember we have got a uh, a, a two by two contingency table and then we have got four cells which we need to plug in figures we have already have the figures for the um the observed value now we want to plug in figures for the observed value for the expected value so what we do we say okay assuming the narrow hypothesis is true assuming the narrow hypothesis is true what is the prevalence of the disease in the study assuming the narrow hypothesis is true so the prevalence if you look at the the, the prevalence of disease in the study uh, the prevalence of the disease in the study the total number of people who are sick in this study is 50 out of 120 if you remember into the table uh, you you add the people who are sick among the people who are staying in the ruins and also you add the people who are sick uh, to those who are staying in the in the in the other halls of residence I think if you, if you recall, it should be 37 uh, among those who are in the hall of rest in the ruins where you are sick, and uh, and uh, 13 in the other halls of residence where we are sick. So in total, there were 50 who were sick in this uh, particular study, and then uh, there are 50. Now we divide by 120, we get uh, 0. Uh, 416. In other words, we get it's 41.6%. So the prevalence in the total study, the prevalence is what? 416 How about those, the proportion of nanny disease? The proportion of nanny disease, of course, is 70 uh, out of 120. We talk about the people did not get the disease. And then this is about 58.4%. 50, so we have these two uh, uh, proportions. So in other words, in this study, the the probability that a person who gets sick in the study is 41.6 percent and the probability that you not get sick in this study is 58.4 now we have those two probabilities uh, the probability of you uh, uh, not getting uh, or getting sick in the study uh, is 41.6 now we ask a question if the now hypothesis is true because the now hypothesis is saying saying no difference so what we say okay in this study if the now hypothesis is true saying that the probability that a person gets a disease is 41.6 now the people we are staying in the in the ruins where how many we are 54 so if the now hypothesis is true that is of no difference in terms of uh, proportions uh, or the likelihood of getting the disease then we we multiply this 46.1 we multiply it with 54 and so under this would get 22.5 uh, just keep in mind we we'll get 22.5 so if the null hypothesis is true it's saying that about 23 persons from the ruins will get sick and then we also do the same we maintain the the same probability that is 41.6 so because the the assumption or the assumption here is that the prevalence is the same p1 is equal to p2 so in this case p1 is 40 is 0 0.4.6 and p2 is the same 0 0.4 point, uh, 0 0.416 is the same so how about the likelihood of uh, one person getting, I mean, how many people would get sick uh, in other halls of residence? According to, um, uh, to this calculation, in other halls of residence, they, if the null hypothesis is true, we expect to find 27.5, about 28 persons, if you like. We expect to find about 28 persons being sick in other halls of residence. We do the same for uh, those who did not seek. According to the now hypothesis, which says, assumes equal probability of getting sick, it's saying that in this study, the likelihood that a person does not get sick is 58.4%. So whether you stay in the, in the ruins or you stay in the other halls of residences, the likelihood that you don't get sick 
is 54 is 58.4 so what we do now we get 50 this uh, 0 0.584 and multiply it with 54 the number of people coming from the ruins then we say okay assuming that this is true how many people would not get sick from the ruins then it becomes 51 point uh, uh, 31.5 of course in real sense we are supposed to round off this so that because you know uh, we don't have, have, a, have a person uh, so it's supposed to be uh, about 32 so 32 persons would not get sick again we do the same for other halls of residence given that the probability is the same then we expect to find 38.5 uh, in this case uh, people would be sick about 39 in this case so here now we get the expected values what we are calculating here are the expected frequencies given that the now hypothesis is true but also bear in mind that we have uh, the observed scenario this is the expected scenario but we also have the observed scenario so now i want just to I, what i've done is that i have the the observed scenario in, in black, uh, uh, so what we observed is here is uh, among the among those people from other of uh, from ruins, uh, 37, if you like, were diseased, and uh, uh, 17 were not diseased. But under the calculation that we have done, uh, based on the expected, given the now hypothesis is true, uh, those. How many people would get sick from the ruins? It will be about 2023 20, or 22.5 plus 23. And those uh, from the ruins who would not get sick would be 31. Similarly, if the null hypothesis are, are is true, how many people who get sick from other halls of residence? It will be about 27. And those who will not get sick will be, will be 35. So these in black are the observed values, and these in the in 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 red are the expected values. So now the chi square helps us to see whether the whether the expected values are the same or similar to the observed values. So now what we want to do is that are these same or different? So that's what we want to do. So of course, assuming that. Assuming that here it was 37, here it was 13, here it was 17, here it was 57, then it would say, of course, that it's the same. And the, of course, then we'll go again. And But here we, we are not sure whether, you know, these are the same or, or different. So we want now to, to, to do what? To, to go ahead and see the relationship between the observed and the expected. Of course, intuitively, we would say that if you find that... The, the observed and the expected are the same, then you would say that the null hypothesis is true. Because if you find that what you calculated using the null hypothesis is the same as what you observed, then that will automatically say the null hypothesis is true because what, we, what, we, what you observed is the same as what the null hypothesis is saying you'll get. So, but in this case, we, we are not sure. So we use a formula uh, to calculate the chi-square value. So a chi-square a, a chi square value um, uh, is obtained using this, this formula, where you, 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 you for each, for in each cell, we have got the observed value in each cell, and we have got the expected value. So we calculate the chi-square value, where we subtract uh, the observed value, uh, the expected value from the observed value. And then we square it and then divide it by the uh, expected value. So we do it for the four cells, uh, cell A, B, C, and D. And then we, we sum up uh, this. And then we, after we sum up this, we get um, a, a chi-square value. So now, you know, a, a statistics basically is based on, on, you know, empirical evidence. Other people have done these studies before, and uh, there's evidence that has been gathered over time. And they have found that, for instance, uh, uh, if the, there's a real difference between the observed and the expected, 
uh, these are the ex values that you could get. If there's no difference, these are the values that you've, you've got. And based on those, they've generated certain tables based on empirical evidence. So if there is a, if there is a, a difference between the expected and the observed, they, will, they, they have provided evidence that these are the chi-square values that you are likely to obtain, given, of course, your level of confidence and also the degrees of freedom. In other words, how many observations you have. So what we do in, under this procedure is that once we get this uh, chi-square value, then we compare it, of course, to what has been observed over time and put in tables. You know, what you find in statistical tables is basically uh, values that people have obtained over a long time. They've done tests and they say that if a scenario is like this, you find this, it will tell you that there's a difference. If a scenario is like this, you find this situation, it tells you that there is uh, no difference. So then what we we'll do is that we get our value and then we'll compare it to the, what has been observed over time or empirically. And those values, you find them in, 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 in the tables. So this is all the computation you do. Um, of course, I said that you have to do for the, the four cells. So this is cell A, B, C, and D. So this is the observed. Uh, then you subtract the expected, divide by the expected. Observed, uh, subtract the... Uh, the expected divided by the, the expected, the same. Observed divided minus expected. So you do all this. And when you have done this computation, uh, what you get is a chi-square value. And this is the uh, degree of freedom. We are talking about one degree of freedom. Remember, I think I, 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 uh, uh, there is a way in which we calculate the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom is calculated by uh, this equation. Uh, the number of uh, rows subtract by one from but subtract one and also the number of columns subtract one. So in this case we have a two by two contingent table and the two, conti two by two contingent table the number of rows are two and the number of columns also are two. So we say two minus one multiplied by two minus one. And this gives us, uh, here we have one and here one, then it gives us the number of degrees, the degrees of freedom we have in this case is one. Assuming we had the, uh, a, a table with uh, three rows and two columns. So if we had a, a, a table with a, a contiguous table with uh, three rows and two columns, then the R here will be three and the C will be two. Then we'll have uh, uh, 3 minus 1 uh, multiplied by 2 minus 1. In other words, the degrees of freedom in such a table will be 2. This is very important when we are calculating the chi-square table and when we, are, when we are comparing this with the, the empirical evidence. So this is the way we calculate the, the degrees of freedom. is based on, the, of course, the number of, of rows and columns. Okay, so... In this case, we have calculated the chi-square value of uh, 29.1 and also the, the degrees of freedom uh, in this case is 1. So now what we do, uh, this uh, I'll explain theoretically here, but uh, the, uh, and I hope that you will follow, and uh, uh, then we, we will have, of course, we can arrange uh, a practical where you, 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 you can actually be shown how to, to, how to read the chi-square table. But I'll just explain, and I, I hope that you follow uh, uh, as I explain. So now what we do, we have the observed value, or the values that we have, we have, we have calculated. We have calculated this value, in, 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 keep this in mind, we have calculated 29 as our chi-square value, uh, given the scenario, and we have one degree of freedom. Uh, now we, we have we have to compare we have to compare with what we have found to what is tabulated what has been tabulated so the tabulated what is tabulated is empirical evidence which will tell us where we stand with respect to our test of this association given the scenario that we have and I told you that in, in the chi square tables are based on empirical evidence which says if you find this scenario this is likely this is what your situation may be. 
And so we have to, you get a chi-square table, uh, which will be provided to you. Uh, and of course, these chi-square tables, you can freely find them on the internet. You can search on the internet and you find the chi-square uh, tables uh, with arrangement or in terms of the degrees of freedom and the values. And also, yeah, it also gives you the, the, the level of confidence you are operating at. So, I said that we, if you remember when I started the NAW hypothesis, I said we are working at 95% uh, confidence uh, level. So if we are working at a 95% confidence level, which means our alpha value is 5%, uh, which gives us, of course, 0 .0, uh, 0.05. This is our alpha value. This is the confidence interval, which is 95%. And then our degree of freedom is 1. So, if you, if you go now to the table, you go to the table, you, the chi-square table, you check uh, on the percentage, normally the percentages are uh, tabulated on top of the chi-square table. On the chi-square table, you look for this value, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.05. You look for this value on the, on the rows, in the rows, you look for this value in the chi-square table. And then the, the degrees of freedom are tabulated in the column. Then you go to the column and look for uh, one degree of freedom. And then you put your finger, of course, where it is uh, 0 0.05 meets one degree of freedom. And the value you find, if, if this is was the, the rows, uh, you take this row, 0 0.5, then you come down and then see, uh, this is a column solo. 0 0.5 on top is a column and then you see where one degree of freedom meet and then the value you are going to find is 3.84 so given that our level of confidence is 0 0.05 and that the degree of freedom is is one what you get is the value that is there is 3.4 so empirically this has been observed uh, you know using uh, several of course Tests that have been done. Now, there is, a, there is a rule here or the principle to follow that if the chi square value that you, you have calculated is greater than the chi square value that is in the table, that's what, of course, we have observed. We, we compare the chi square value that we have calculated, the chi square in the test and we compare the chi-square value, that is what, in the table. So the chi-square value we calculated is 29.1, based on that formula. And now, what we, have tab what we have found in the table, or what has been given our scenario, is 3.84. So what we find is that our chi-square value is what is greater than what is in the table. And according to the rule, under this chi square, under the the the, the chi square test, if the calculated value or the test, the chi square test, the one that you have calculated, is greater than the one that is in the table, then you reject the now hypothesis. So, if the chi square value, I follow me closely, that you have calculated, is greater than the one that is in our in the table, then you reject the now hypothesis. So in this case, our chi-square value is far greater than the, the, the chi-square value that is in the table. So our case will be to reject the now hypothesis and state that the, 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 the chi-square the, chi uh, the now hypothesis states that there is no difference in the, in the proportion of uh, students suffering from diarrhea among those staying in the ruins and also other cause of residence. Then we are saying, under our scenario, we reject that. So if we reject that, then we are saying there is a difference because we have rejected now, now, now hypothesis which says there is no difference. But under this scenario, we say that there is a difference. We can also use uh, the p-value, of course, to uh, come up to the... The, the same scenario. But in the absence of the table, I'll just say we settle for this using the chi-square value to make this conclusion. So if the 
chi-square calculated uh, is greater than the chi-square tabulated, we reject the null hypothesis. If the chi-square calculated is smaller than the chi-square tabulated, then we accept the null hypothesis. But in this case, we reject the null hypothesis. So this is what we are saying about uh, the, the, the test principles. Uh, if if a chi-square test greater, then we reject. If smaller, we we uh, we 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 accept. The same for the p-value. We can use the p-value. Uh, of course, if you look, it's like the other way around. If the p-value uh, for the uh, test is smaller than the p-value for the alpha, then we reject. If the p-value for the test is greater than the p-value for the alpha, then we, 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 or in this case we reject this, we, we, we accept or we don't reject the null hypothesis. So these are the two scenarios that can, can arise. But in, in this case, in my explanation, I normally focus only on, a, on the chi-square value in the absence of the table, uh, which can be demo, uh, de shown to you uh, in a practical uh, uh, case. So our, our, our case in this case, what we are saying, our sense, since the chi-square value in the test or calculated is greater, uh, and the p-value for the, for the, the p-value if you like the p-value for the calculator, this p-value is the p-value of the 29.1. Uh, so when you are using the p-value for the 29.1, what you do is that uh, if you want to use the p-value method to, 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 to reject or accept the null hypothesis, what you do is that you get this, uh, this 29.1, you get this value, and then you check, you go in the table uh, under one degree of freedom and see where it falls with respect to the, the, the alpha value. So then you see where that thing, this falls, and then you get that value where it falls, you get the p-value from there. And then you compare that p-value with respect to the p-value that you, you set as your prior. So in this case, our prior, for instance, was 0 0.05. This is our prior. But then you, you use this 25 here using this approach, you use 29, you go in the table and look where it falls. Uh, so, and then when you find that, then you check the p-value where it falls uh, on, the, on, the, on, on, the, in, on the columns. Yeah, and then you, you now compare that, that value to what you set as your prior. Uh, so that, that's a, that another procedure. But you can, so you can use that one as a, another, an alternative method for rejecting and accepting the null hypothesis. But in this case, I'm using the chi-square values to do that, uh, to make that decision. So we are saying that given our scenario, we reject the null hypothesis and state that there is an association between exposure and the disease. So the conclusion uh, from our study is that the proportion of students suffering uh, diarrhea among those living in the ruins is not the same as those living in other hours of residence. And then of course that is our p-value. Because why we have this conclusion? Because we have rejected the null hypothesis uh, having this test. So the chi square test is used uh, is used to conduct uh, hypothesis testing in inferential statistics when handling nominal data. So I want you to take this as your take-home message. Uh, the take-home message is that the chi square test is used to do what? Uh, conduct hypothesis testing as part of inferential testing, when you are handling uh, nominal data. Uh, that is, this is categorical data. And the test can be used to test, uh, uh, can be used to test for association between uh, a risk factor and also an independent, uh, an outcome. Uh, so you can, you can want, you may want to test between, uh, associate between an outcome and the, of course, and the, a, a, a risk factor. So you have an independent variable and you have a dependent variable. Uh, in our case that we looked at, our independent variable uh, was uh, uh, was the our independent variable was uh, the wall of residence where the student uh, uh, was studying, and the, our outcome variable, dependent variable, was the area in which uh, the student uh, uh, was, was the diarrhea, whether the student got diarrhea or didn't get diarrhea. 
Thank you for listening.